Welcome back to the arena. I am Michael Cora. Now, a woman in Britain, Suzanne Troussard, aborted her baby because, well, because it had Down syndrome and some other challenges. She then wrote about all this in the, uh, the press and the Daily Mail and claims that she loved the baby. She did the best for him and her and has no regrets at all. Really? I think we should debate this issue. Rachel Siegel is from Sun News, used to be one of my producers some time ago. She's gone on to much better things. And uh, Christina Alimo from Campaign Life. I bet she disagrees with uh, what this woman did, and I hope with Rachel as well. Rachel, you, you agree with the decision to abort a baby because that baby had Down syndrome? Yes, uh, because based on the article, um, this woman talks at length about how this was a very difficult decision for her and her husband. Mm. This particular child not only had Down syndrome, but she notes in the article that he also had other challenges. She's not um, very specific, though, is she, about she's that? She's not, but she does mention that it go went beyond the scope of Down syndrome. Um, and so her and her husband decided to abort the child. And I would agree that in situations where a child does have uh, possible challenges mm -hmm. uh, once they are born, um, that this is really up to the parents and the situation that the parents are in. So if these parents felt they were able to handle having a child with severe disabilities and Down syndrome, uh, that's, that's up to the parents and whether or not they want to abort that child. What would you say to a Down syndrome person watching right now? I would say that your parents felt that you, they had the opportunity to be able to care for you and provide right. for you the best life that you could have. What about if you just, I don't know, don't feel like the child, or maybe it's a girl and you really wanted a boy, okay to abort? No, I think Why? that- Why? What's the difference? In pregnancy, obviously the end goal is to bring the baby to term, but there has to be exceptions. Why? Um, gender, I believe, is not an exception to that rule. But that's a subjective. I mean, what, what is the objective rule or regulation to decide and define when you can kill the baby and when you can't? It's about quality of life. So if the quality of life of the, the child is yeah. jeopardized, if the quality of life of the parents or other children of those parents, uh, those would be exceptions to okay. that. All right. I have to say, I, I know a quite a few people with Down syndrome children, two or three, mm -hmm. actually four or five, and the siblings of, the, of those children tend to be wonderful young people because they have to work with someone who does have some challenges. Yeah. But uh, anyway, over to you. What do you think? Well, I think this story is doubly tragic because the parents said that they love the child so much and then the mother admits to basically swallowing poison to end the life of the child that she loves so much. And yeah, let's just talk about that because it, it wasn't an abortion as we normally think it, was it? No, it? no. It, it was um, It was a... An abortion done via medication yeah. it wasn't um, a dilation and evacuation or anything like that um, but she basically you know it's tragic because she poisoned the child and then she said it came out and she looked at it and it had a button nose yeah. and all of these kinds of things and and that makes it tragic but I know uh, Rachel mentioned uh, quality of life yeah. now that's a very subjective terminology because I think what we're doing here is we're imposing what we believe to be a good quality of life and saying, well, if a person doesn't match up to those standards that we believe that they shouldn't have life in mm -hmm. general and that it, anything else is a bad quality of life, yeah. which is definitely what we're seeing. And so it's kind of an antithesis because I would think that if I love this child, I would want to spend every single moment possible with that child, mm -hmm. take it to term, uh, have it, you know, die lovingly in my arms instead of poisoning it and and having yeah. you know all of this grief surrounding it so it, it's kind of a mystery to me it seems to me whatever we think about the the act itself this woman is troubled yes. uh, neurotic pain in the backside annoying irritating all sorts of things but the act itself quality of life well let's say that a child is born in in a third world country uh, very difficult economic circumstances quality of life what will be it'll be a challenge abort is that a good reason to abort no, I mean, again, quality of life should be defined by the parents. So whether or not the parents feel that they can provide for that child a quality of life, you talk about socioeconomic yeah. issues. For example, if I um, had socioeconomic issues and then um, was put in a position where I found out that my child did uh, was going to have Down syndrome, I have to decide whether or not I'm able to provide right. For there's okay, special challenges. This is in the UK, it. very much like Canada, a very civilized system. This yeah. is a wealthy woman. That these people have money, so this child would have had the best of care. But if we focus it all on the parent, the the part of the equation where the power 
will rest. They have the power. They can do what they want. Aren't we really saying that the people who have authority and power can do what they want with the powerless and those who lack it? Well, uh, if uh, they ultimately were the ones who created this child, and they are ultimately the ones who this child will be dependent upon right. uh, for at least a period of their yeah. life. What about after birth? What about if, if the child is one or two years old, and they say, but you know what, we really can't cope anymore. Is it acceptable to kill that child? No. Why? Uh, because a killing of a, a child that's been born, I mean, this, is, this speaks to the question of when life starts, mm. um, but it definitely starts once somebody has been born into Does this it? world. Definitely. Because there are, there are people today in the field of ethics who say, no, one-year-old, two-year-old, you can still kill a child. If, if, it, if there are problems, you should be allowed to kill. Right, and I disagree with okay. that. Well, I think that then, uh, Rachel, uh, don't take this the wrong way, but I think that's intellectually dishonest because if we're saying that these are uh, criteria to end the life of your child, you named socioeconomic issues. So if we have a family with two lawyers making seven-figure salaries each and they have you know, three or four kids and then all of a sudden they lose everything they have, what Michael is getting at, I think, is or do they have the right to then, you know, take the kids' lives because they can't provide for them anymore? I mean, we haven't talked about adoption. Currently, I know International Down Syndrome Coalition, there's actually a waiting list to uh, adopt children with Down syndrome. Really? Is that right? Yes, yeah, there's a 300 person wait list in America alone because there are people who are willing to step up and take uh, on the responsibility and, you know, whatever the medical situation. Let, let um, me ask you, I mean, Down syndrome, yes. the, I mean, it, it just amazes me that someone would say, I'm going to kill my child because of Down syndrome. Yeah. But let's say it's a very severe disability and yeah. that child will, will never function, will never say a word, will never speak, eat, maybe even breathe on their own. Yeah. Is there ever an argument to abort? I would say no, because especially with science the way it is today, we don't want to eliminate people, we want to eliminate problems. Mm -hmm. So I think doctors very often would uh, recommend an abortion as an alternative to, let's say, beginning of life palliative care, spending mm -hmm. time with the children. Um, oftentimes there are misdiagnoses, and ironically enough, Down syndrome is the one of the diseases that is most uh, often misdiagnosed. Mm. So uh, whether it's a fatal fetal anomaly or not, okay. there are other options. All right, last word to you. I would agree that we want to deal with problems, uh, but you know, in this day and age, like really, we're dealing with situations where uh, children are having severe disabilities, and that mm. quality of life should be left okay. up to the parents. I, I'll end with this. Um, my niece is quite profoundly autistic, and when my sister, who's not really very political or religious, but when she went to see her doctor. Uh, and it was a, a late pregnancy, and the doctor said, uh, I strongly recommend a termination. And my sister, how shall I put this? She told him to go forth and multiply. But she used a more Anglo-Saxon, briefer way to say it, and her, her child is the most wonderful little human being. And, uh, but anyway, I'm just a referee. I have no opinions at all. Thank you very much indeed. You're welcome. You.